So, my sister took this personality test online, and apparently Ashley has already taken this test, and she knows her results. Christina has taken this test. She knows her results, so they want me to take the test. I have no idea what the questions on the test are, but I figured I would take it for you all. Um, so, and then if I don't want to, um, it says it takes less than 12 minutes. If I don't want to share it, I, then I'll just delete it. Answer honestly, even if you don't like the answer. Try not to leave any neutral answers. Okay. You find it difficult to introduce yourself to other people. Disagree. You often get so lost in thoughts that you ignore or forget your surroundings. Hmm. You often get so... No... I'm going to say disagree. You try to respond to your emails as soon as possible and cannot stand a messy inbox. Agree. You find it easy to stay relaxed even when there is some pressure. Mm. I don't know. I guess that. You do not usually initiate conversations. Uh... Uh, you rarely do something just out of sheer curiosity. You rarely do something just out of sheer curiosity. So, I'm, yeah, I'm going to say disagree because I do things all the time out of curiosity. Did it do it? How come it's, okay. You feel superior to other people. Being organized is more important to you than being adaptable. Um, you are usually highly motivated and energetic. Winning a debate matters less to you than making sure no one gets upset. Um, I'm going to say that. Years ago, that would have been a different answer. You often feel as if you have to justify yourself to other people. Your home and work environments are quite tidy. You do not mind being at the center of attention. You consider yourself more practical than creative. People can rarely upset you. Your travel plans are usually well thought out. It is often difficult for you to relate to other people's feelings. Your mood can change very quickly. <laughs> um, in a discussion, truth should be more important than people's sensitivities. In a discussion, truth should be important. Uh, you rarely worry about how your actions affect other people. Your work style is closer to random energy spikes than to a methodical, organized approach. You are often envious of others. An interesting book or a video game is often better than a social event. Being able to develop a plan and stick to it is the most important part of every project. You rarely get carried away by fantasies and ideas. You often find yourself lost in thought when you are walking in nature. If someone does not respond to your email quickly, you start worrying if you said something wrong. As a parent, you would rather see your child grow up kind than smart. You do not let other people influence your actions. When you sleep, your dreams tend to focus on the real world and its events. It does not take you much time to start getting involved in social activities at your new workplace. Um, it does not take you much um, I'll just put this one because I don't really have a workplace, so I'm just going to say this. You are more of a natural improviser than a careful planner. 
Your emotions control you more than you control them. You enjoy going to social events that involve dress up or role play activities. Um, I'm going to say I agree, but I've never been, Kevin's arm's getting tired. I've never been to a Halloween party or anything. I've never been invited to one. So I'm just going to say agree because I would like to do that if I was ever invited to someplace like that. You often spend time exploring unrealistic and impractical yet intriguing ideas. You would rather improvise than spend time coming up with a detailed plan. You are a relatively reserved and quiet person. If you had a business, you would find it very difficult to fire loyal but un underperforming employees. Um, I'll say agree. You often contemplate the reasons for human existence. Logic is usually more important than heart when it comes to making important decisions. Um, keeping your options open is more important than having a to-do list. If your friend is sad about something, you are more likely to offer emotional support than suggest ways to deal with the problem. Um, you rarely feel insecure. You have no difficulties coming up with a personal timeline and sticking to it. Being right is more important than being cooperative when it comes to teamwork. You think that everyone's views should be respected regardless of whether they are supported by facts or not. You feel more energetic after spending time with a group of people. You frequently misplace your things. You see yourself as a very emotionally stable. Your mind is always buzzing with unexplored ideas and plans. You would not call yourself a dreamer. You usually find it difficult to relax when talking in front of many people. Um, you agree with the one above that? Oh, you would not. You would not call yourself a dreamer. You you were pointed, yeah. Yeah, I disagree. Um, generally speaking, you rely more on your experience than your imagination. Um, I don't know. You worry too much about what other people think. If the room is full, you stay closer to the walls, avoiding the center. You have a tendency to procrastinate until there's not enough time to do everything. You feel very anxious in stressful situations. I don't know. You believe that it's more rewarding to be liked by others than to be powerful. You have always been interested in unconventional and ambiguous things, for example, in books, arts, or movies. Um, uh, you often take initiative in social situations. Oh, this is the results. And my battery's going dead. E N F J T. What is the extroverted, intuitive, feeling, judging? Dag, I'm 89% judging? Turbulent? Really? That's very interesting. I have two more Christmas cards to show you. This is from the Shakiri family in California. Thank you very much. That's a cute card. And then this is Sarah and her family in California. And you've heard me mention Sarah over and over again and her mom, Nancy. Sarah is the one who, among many other things, she sends us the C's chocolates. And she sends us all kinds of things. C's chocolates, Merrick chocolates, stuff from Trader Joe's. She just has sent, sent us everything. Um, so... 
you have her dad. This is her dad, Rodney. And then Sarah is next. And then this is her sister. And her sister's name is Erin. And then her mom, Nancy. And then you have uh, Lexi is the mini Labradoodle. And Colby is the big lab. And so that is their card. And I love it. Absolutely love it. You all have a very beautiful family. Well, I want to comment on this book. This is The Girl Who Was Taken, and it's by Charlie Donley. Donlea? I don't know how you would say the last name. Um, but I just finished this last night. Dr. Dan sent this to me in the mail probably a month ago, and I was in the middle of another book. So I wanted to finish that one first. And so then, first of all, I'm, I'm a slow reader, but besides that, I only give myself like 15 minutes a night to read, sometimes 10 minutes a night to read. I have so much to do on the computer, and um, then I like to answer comments and things like that, that I just don't give myself a lot of time to read. I love it, though. I love to read. And I used to, I used to read so many books each month. I mean, it was ridiculous the amount of books I would read each month. And now, if I get through a book a month, then I'm considering myself good. But I have to tell you all about this because Dr. Dan sent me, excuse me, Dr. Dan sent me this book, The Girl Who Was Taken. And I finished it last night. It was, I think it was like after two in the morning. And because once you get down to the last... 40 pages you don't want to put this down this is a page turner anyway it's about um girls that have been kidnapped and literally you don't want to put it down from beginning to end it's like that however since i don't have a lot of time i had no choice but to only read for like 10 or 15 minutes every night because normally if I wasn't doing stuff, it, this would have been gone. I would have eaten this book up, gobbled this up in a couple of days. That's how good it is. Um, so, uh, but last night, it was like after 2 in the morning that I finished it. And then the last time I looked at the clock, it was like 3.30 in the morning. I just could not turn my mind off after I was finished with it. This, it was, I told Kevin, I said, this is almost like reading a Stephen King book. It's... You are literally on the edge of your seat in, when you're reading this book, waiting to see what's going to happen and when it's going to happen. And, and I love the way that it's written because most chapters, a lot of authors, they write in these long chapters that go on for 20 pages. This book, they might, you might only read four pages and then that's the end of the section. You might only read three pages and that's the end of a section. I really like that because it it splits it up and it's just, for me, I read it quicker when it's like that. Um, so I love the style of writing. Uh, it was just, it is a page turner. If you're looking for a good book, um, he's written this one. Uh, Kevin looked it up. He's written another one called Summit Lake. Like and then there's one more. What was the other one called? I don't remember. It's coming out this year or it, next year. Okay, there's another one that's coming out next year. This is really Summit good, Lake. though. I said Summit Lake, yeah. but then there's another one. I don't remember that. But the reason I think that this freaks me out, and like, like Agatha Christie's, I can read Agatha Christie murder mysteries all day long and MC Beaton all day long, but they take places where I don't live. This was like, and like Agatha Christie was written a long time ago. And so it's, I love them and I think they're very, very interesting. But it's not like something that could happen right now in her books. That, that fear's not there. Because I'm not going to be staying at a manor house, you know. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But this, this is something that could happen right now to anyone at any time and it's freaky it's really really freaky so you know when there's books like that that it can happen right now then yeah it kind of freaks you out so 
this was an excellent book so now i'm gonna start the next one that he gave me i probably i don't know if i'll start it tonight or tomorrow night i might not start it until the next night um but i'm gonna be starting it soon it's called the widow and um so i'll read it next but so dr dan if you're watching this was really really good and anybody who's looking for a good book I would look for this at your library or half price books um normally i look to see when they come out normally i look at the date first thing and i didn't this one says 2017 so this is a new book books by charlie donella summit lake and the girl who was taken so i don't know the one the other one must be the one that's coming out next year the, the other name that we saw um and then i also wanted to talk to you about uh liz my friend liz in ohio she sent me a an email telling me asking me she said do you watch the great american baking show well kevin and i had watched the first episode and i was really really excited about it this season because paul hollywood's on there judging and i love we both love paul hollywood and um we think he's just he's just wonderful he's fun to watch he's very very interesting he he he's a great baker works really well with his hands and um so we were excited to see him on there well abc has pulled the show completely pulled the show off the air because one of the judges uh johnny lazini um has some uh has been accused of some sexual misconduct and this guy kevin and i never liked this guy from the get-go he just seems like a jerk he just he seems like one of those people like i'm better than you people and i i know everything and you know nothing <laughs> that type of person and neither one of us like being around that type of person so but i think it's very unfair that abc i think they made a huge mistake to pull the entire show off the air and they say that they're going to announce the winners later on but I think it was a mistake. I think it was very unfair to the host of the show. There's two hosts, a man and woman, to Paul Hollywood. I think it's unfair to all the contestants who, you know, I told Kevin, I said, you know, imagine if I got on the show. If, if your mom's on the show or your dad or your brother or sister or your friend and they're on the show and you're looking forward to seeing them and see how far they can go and and see them throughout this competition and then all of a sudden oh abc's not going to play anymore because this guy uh there's some allegations against him that's fine pull him off the show and if they've all been recorded well then they've all been recorded and abc they can say well we didn't know it's not like anybody's going to care because abc didn't know so once it's filmed it's it's filmed or don't bring him back for the finale or whatever's left to film i just think it was a shame that they pulled the whole show so if any of you all were watching that and you feel the same way you can let me know or you might feel like hey abc was right to pull the show i just don't think so i really don't i don't think that they needed to do that uh just because of what he did i just don't think they needed to do that that's just my opinion so i'm watching the clip back and my point during this section is mario batelli uh in of the chew has just come out uh he's had some allegations made against him and he has accepted blame but they did not cancel the whole show they didn't cancel the two because mario batelli did something wrong so why did they cancel the great american bake-off because this one guy because this one judge did something it makes no sense to me what's the difference between i mean and and you know the great american bake-off isn't going to be even be on that long there's not even that many episodes of that the chew's going to go on and on and on so if someone could explain to me that that what do you think the rationalization was why pull one and not pull the other it it seems very um unfair to me if if you know if they're going to pull one they should pull them all you know and just like um house of cards uh i know they're gonna keep they're gonna um, 
keep on with House of Cards and Kevin Spacey isn't going to be in it, but they didn't pull the whole show. I just, I don't understand why they pulled The Great American Bake Off. It makes no sense to me. This is something that really, really bothers me. I do not like seeing dogs on the backs of trucks like this. It just, I think it's sad. I think it's sad for the dog. It's cold outside. You can see that it's, uh, you can see it's breath, but I mean, if there was a wreck, if that truck stopped quickly, those dogs would fall off there. And Kevin and I have actually seen that before. I, I don't know if I've told you all that, but- It wasn't a wreck either. It just no, it wasn't a wreck. It just literally flipped out of the back of the truck. So anyway, I just, I think that is so sad. And you just never know. And that one little dog on the left looks, they just- I think it's got a leash on the one. They look so old. The they do. The one See, on, that was a problem with the one that came out of the truck when we were watching. It was on a leash and it was like running next to the truck. Yeah, because it got hung. Yeah. It literally got hung around its neck, this leash did. It was very, very scary. So, if you all do that, uh, I'm sorry if it offends you, but that I just think that's very, very unsafe. I don't think it's right to do your animals like that. Yeah, leave it on. Yeah, I'll leave them at home. Yeah, get up next time. Three kids are in there, Sydney and Jessica. Yeah, there's my dad, and he has my nieces in the car with him. Yeah, there they are. <laughs> oh, it's my son. <laughs> You're in the back, and he's in the front. <laughs> Where y'all going? Get his nails clipped. Oh, are you? Yeah. Hello, I love you. Please and eat, and then we're gonna go look at Star Wars. Oh, uh, well, I hope you have a good time. Your mother has a box of ba uh, Bath and Body Works at my house. Did you ever divorce him? He can't him. Oh, I know. <laughs> hey, Spooky. Wait out, huh? Oh, man. Look, he's just nervous. He's, he's very nervous. They're going to get your nails cut, son. Yeah. Get under, get under the seat. Come here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> He's a big boy. Big boy, yes. Yes. She did not. She lost her to So that's okay. <laughs> Hey, hi there. <laughs> He's the house cat. He's a big boy. So we got Guido's nails uh, clipped again, and he's leaving a deposit right now on the lawn. We did not bring any bags with us because we didn't know that he would need to make a deposit uh, but it was only it was $15 and that was to get his nails cut and then they grinded them down is what she said and um, so yeah 15 bucks for that I don't think that's bad at all so I'll make sure that I put it on the calendar and we'll just once a month now we'll just start going out there once a month so here he is can you say hi Guido do you feel better you got a snotty nose you feel better? We've come in PetSmart and they have these new toys out that we haven't seen. These are Heine, Heine Sniffin <laughs> and they have Barks Wolf Beer and they have Mountain Drool, Deer's Bite, uh, Catro Cataroma. Or Cataroma Extra. I just thought those were cute and they're, it says they're 1039. Oh, what a Jose Perry. Movie is special. Those are cute, though. Look at this cat. Oh, that's an animal. They have Tsum Tsums at PetSmart. Ashley would die. How much are those? Buy three, get one free. Oh, look! They have a Nightmare Before Christmas. Oh my gosh! Do they have a? Um, do they have a Marie? Oh, I love this one. Look at them. Oh, those are big. Ones. Do they not have a Marie? Look at them. Oh, Ashley would love Yeah, you are. There's you. The old donkey. 
No, it doesn't seem right. Uh uh. If they had a Marie, I would get her one. The small ones are five, six dollars. This one, these are eight dollars. They're really big ones. Are twelve. Those are so dollars. cute. I think that uh, Chapel, Chapel, oh, he would love that. But now they don't have Marie, so we'll have to wait and see when we can get a Marie. We got two more Christmas cards in the mail. Uh, this is from Teresa in North Carolina. Very cute card. And this is from the Miller family in South Carolina. So I love the I love the the classic Christmas cards, but then I also like the ones that you all sent with your pictures on them because I, I just think it's nice getting to see uh, getting to see your faces. Ashley made a video where um, she shows what she got everyone for Christmas, but she also also in that video shows what uh, she got Amelia for her birthday. Well, she came home um, yesterday from uh, yesterday, and she had bought Amelia some more things for her birthday. So you will not see these things in that video so i thought i would show them to you but she's given these to amelia for her birthday as well this is a melissa and doug reusable sticker pad it is a playhouse it has five scenes and over 175 stickers that can be repositioned so you have a living room and a kitchen a bedroom a bathroom and you have the backyard and you have all kinds of stickers i told her i would enjoy playing with this myself because that's just i just like stuff like that so uh, i'm sure amelia and gavin will love that and then she bought her the melissa and doug exam and treat pet vet pet vet play set this has 24 pieces it includes a plush dog and cat everything animal lovers need for happy and healthy pets it says so you get i actually called it the cone of shame <laughs> and you get bandages and all that and then she got her because she bought that she said i'm turning into you if i see one i have to get the other one too she bought the feeding and grooming pet care play set and this also includes a dog and a cat it has complete supplies for taking care of furry friends, 24 pieces, and it has cat food, dog food, it has pet treats, it has the little bowls, uh, the grooming supplies, everything. So, um, I think Amelia will absolutely love these. I think Gavin will enjoy them too. Uh, but I wanted to make sure I showed them to you because I told her, I said, I've already made that video. That video is, is uh, ready to go. So I'm not remaking it. So um, I wanted to make sure that I showed you every, um, everything else that she bought too. Well, while I have been cleaning today, Kevin has been cooking. And what all have you cooked? I haven't cooked. You haven't cooked. Anything. You prepared things. I made sausage balls. Uh huh. And we got put them ready. Put them, them in the freezer. freezer. Uh huh. Um, I've made these cherry chews. They're ready. They just need to be cut up. They need to be cut, and we need to put uh, powdered sugar on them. Do you put powdered yeah, sugar? you put your powdered sugar on them. Doesn't that's how say you, that in the directions. So that, yeah, that's how you do it. Um, and then the um, the recipes on uh, YouTube, if you're curious about them. And then um, these are for Oreo balls. Mm hmm. And then I made something else. Uh, peanut butter roll. Peanut butter roll. Peanut butter roll. I couldn't remember what it was. So, I'll get so this in the, the thing about this, the reason I'm showing this to you right now is because if you watch our, you need a spoon. If you watch our video on the Oreo balls, we uh, put this in a pan on the stove because that's just how I thought you did it. And we melt it, and then we would dip the Oreo ball uh, in the uh, almond bar, and uh, then you have to work quickly, and then you put it out on a piece of white paper. Well, Kevin just read the directions. We've never actually read the directions on the package of the almond bar, and it says to put it in a microwave-safe bowl. It doesn't even give stacked top directions. So, we've never done this before, but Kevin made Oreo balls using golden oreos i cannot wait to taste one uh, the directions are exactly the same as on they're called best ever oreo balls that's the video i have up on youtube um, but i've never had them in the golden variety uh, you but you could make any variety um, we saw they have the um, they still have like the cinnamon bun oreos they have the birthday Oreos. You could make these Oreo balls in 
any flavor that they have. I think it would be fun if you were having a birthday party to buy the the birthday and buy the chocolate ones and the golden ones and then have a really festive look for for your birthday so anyway i'm going to help him i'm going to get the um sprinkles out and he'll uh dip the the ball in the almond bark and then i will put the sprinkles on because you do still have to work kind of quickly or it will will set um but i'll show you how they look uh, but I wanted you all to know that because I thought that, you know, we've never cooked these. Uh, we've never melted it before in the microwave. We've also always done it on the stovetop, so I thought that was different. We each have an Oreo ball, and like I've said, we've never tried the golden before, so this will be interesting. They're heavy. <laughs> uh-huh. Hmm. It of a cake pop. Me too. That's really good. Has the same kind of texture as a cake pop, too. Yeah. That... That looks just like a cake pop. Like a vanilla cake, cake pop. Yeah, vanilla. Mm-hmm. So you like this? Mm-hmm. I'm worried that the rest of the family will miss the chocolate. Mm. I like to like these. You do? Mm-hmm. If they don't, I will. <laughs> if they don't, then we have a whole tin full of them. But we store them in the refrigerator because they have cream cheese, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But that worked out so much better, melting that almond bark in a oh, glass bulb. bowl. Oh, yeah. hundred times easier. And from now on, that's what we're going to be doing. Well, these are good. I, I, don't, I don't think they have as much flavor mm -hmm. as they don't. the chocolate ones. So the chocolate ones are still my favorite, honestly. I agree. But these are good and it was fun to try them for once. Mm -hmm. So I washed Guido's blanket and I'm coming in here, uh, opened the dryer door and I told Ashley, I said, I have to show this. This is disgusting. This is the hair. Look at this. That came out of his blanket. Chapel's like, what is that? Is that a bunny? Is that a new <laughs> Look at Chapel. <laughs> he wants to... Here, Guido, look. It's you. Look. Oh my gosh. I know. It's like a rabbit. Look at the <laughs> big boy who's in the sink. I left for two seconds to answer my phone and he snuck in while I was here. Oh, he takes up the whole sink. He's a baby. He's a very good boy. He likes this warm bathroom because Ashley has the heat on. Well, we've been to Walmart again. I really honestly did not think we would need to go to Walmart anymore, but we did. Why did we have to go? Guido needed sticks. Really Guido really needed sticks, and, and so we really needed to go for those, but we ended up spending like $129. So we, we bought other things, um, which you'll see in a grocery haul. I know there's not gonna be a grocery haul this week, but there will be one the, the week after but i wanted to show you all we stopped at the p.o box and i got more christmas cards i got a christmas card from laura and mark in florida and i love this and it's textured there we go it's a textured card and i love that and then uh, Shel uh, shelby in california sent me a card, but she also said, sent something else. There's her card, which I love. I think that's beautiful. I haven't seen a card like that before. She sent 
box tops for Ashley. Ashley appreciates these so much. And I can tell by the boxes, Shelby, that you eat a lot of fiber one bars, <laughs> which is good. I like them too. Uh, my box tops, it's, it's funny to see where they come from. My box tops mainly come from Nature Valley bars. So you're, um, you're buying the fiber one, which I think is the same company. And then the last card is from Teresa in Tennessee. And I love your card too. And I love what you wrote on the inside. And thank you very, very much. I appreciate these. I will hang them up and uh, I will show, I'll have to show uh, all the Christmas cards on the wall. Um, I probably, that will probably be in next week's vlog. I'll probably have uh, because I've been having to upload the, the videos early, I will probably have like our family dinner and um, uh, show you the Christmas cards and stuff next week. I guess, I guess in that time I'm going to do it. And also last week I said that I, I was keeping track of all the Christmas movies we watched. That'll be in next week's vlog too because as of right now, we still have to, time to watch more Christmas movies. So we'll, we'll be watching a few more. Uh, so I don't want to show you like we've watched all these movies and then we're not finished with them So that'll be in next week's video, too, uh, but I did want to tell you all uh, That this morning I had like bottles and bottles and bottles of coke zero and so I've really pared it down to like because I was drinking I'm telling you, it was like a smoker. I was drinking like probably five or six bottles a day, which is horrible, I know. And I mean, all day long, that's all I would drink. And so I had gotten it down to where there were, I only had a certain amount left. So I was only drinking two a day. And my first bottle was the first thing in the morning, you know, just like a lot of people like a cup of coffee. I drank coffee for years so many years i mean i think since kevin and i first got married i drank coffee in the morning and um so i don't know how i started drinking coke zero i think it had to do with me working out and i used to drink coffee before i would work out and now i just want to get up and get going so i don't drink anything at all until i'm finished so coke zero hit the spot and it's literally like drinking a bottle of syrup uh, after drinking water now, it's like having a bottle of syrup. So, the, the point of me telling you all this is that yesterday I had my last Coke Zero. And so, this morning when I got up, I did my, uh, my bike and I got off the bike and I, I, in my head I thought, I, I can't wait for the flavor, the taste of that, the sugar, the syrup. And I thought, oh, no, I don't have any more. I've drank them all. The party's over. <laughs> so, um, I did want to grab sparkling water because I think that would, it's too harsh for me first thing in the morning. And I tried some, I tried a sparkling water before first thing in the morning and it was like, oh, it was no way. It was one of the, I think one of those like LaCroix though. And it might have been because it was a LaCroix. Uh, I haven't tried the Clear American, the Walmart brand first thing in the morning. But, so I uh, looked in the refrigerator and I thought, what is going to be the most gentle, but still give me a little bit of sugar because that's what I'm used to. So I grabbed one of the Nestle grapes waters and they're not sparkling water. It's just regular. This cat is bugging me to death. wanting me to pet him while I'm standing here the whole time. wanting me to pet him. I see you chapel. And then Guido's over here sitting like a frog. He's, yeah, we see you, Chapel. Yes, you had your... So this morning, I had my, but the Nestle, the grape, and it was not the same. It did not give me the, just the feeling, that sugar feeling that goes all through my body. <laughs> I just love it. That, it didn't give me that, I'm gonna drink this and then I'm gonna want more and more and more until I finish the whole bottle. Cause normally, once I'm finished on the bike, I will finish that whole bottle within probably, I don't know, probably 40 minutes I drink the whole bottle, which I guess isn't bad, that's probably normal. But I mean, I drink it pretty quick because I, I like the sugar and then I want more and more. So 
it wasn't that way at all with the grape this morning, I'll tell you that. And But I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna have to suck it up and get used to it, and so that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm drinking it, and uh, that's what I'm doing. And we don't have any Coke Zero in the house. Uh, Kevin has, hasn't had any Coke. I'm gonna show Kevin. Kevin's making cornbread. Kevin, how have you been without having any Coke at all? I drink water most of the day anyway. He, you, he's been drinking uh, plain water, just plain. He doesn't put, like I bought the um, the sugar powder packets to put in there. You don't put anything in yours, do you? And you haven't had any headaches or withdrawal. No, see, but, but see, a lot of time I would drink Cokes is at night though. During all day long, I would drink water right. with, that, with that cup with ice. Right. Um, so I never drank Cokes until I got home. Right. Well, Ashley's talked about before, like when she's gone off the coke, having having withdrawals and headaches and stuff like that. And I'm hoping that that won't happen to me. But I've been drinking it for so many years that it wouldn't surprise me. The caffeine. The caffeine. So I'm hoping that won't happen to me. But um, all we have in the house is water, so there's there's no choice. Well, and tea. We do have tea, so if I uh, truly, if I wanted to make a pitcher of tea, I could make a pitcher of tea. Yep. But I don't plan to do that because I don't think tea is kind to your kidneys either. Honestly, I love it, but I, I don't think I should drink. I don't think I should go from drinking Coke Zero to drinking pitchers of tea either. So I don't think that would be smart. So anyway, I just wanted to let you all know that I'm doing this and um, I've, I've heard responses from some of you all that say that you're trying to do it too and that you've gotten down to two a day, some of you have said, and some of you have said that you're trying to get off the Coke Zero complete or a Coke and just go to water too and we can do this together, we can. Um, you know, if you don't have it in the house, that's my whole thing with dieting or anything, you know, if you don't have it in the house, then, then there's no temptation. So I don't have it in the house, so I won't be tempted. Well, I wanted to thank everyone who mentioned uh, the Clear American Golden Peach flavor to me. I actually just sit here and finished it. I started it yes last night, but I finished it just now. Um, I really, really doubted you. <laughs> I was just going to be honest. I did not think that I was going to like this because I don't like fresh peaches. I like peaches out of a can with syrup. <laughs> um, this is good. This is very good. I would definitely buy this again. I'm so impressed with this. Now, Ashley took a sip of it and she was like, no way. I loved it. Uh, I think it, it's different. It, it just say, tastes so good. And it does taste like peach. But for some reason, the Clear American from Walmart, I haven't had trouble with that biting harshness of like the LaCroix or what was the other brand I tried, Dasani. Those both have a harshness there that this does not have. And this is sparkling water as well. And I don't know why this doesn't have it, but it doesn't. At least the ones I've tried so far. I haven't tried them all yet. But this was so good. I would definitely get the Golden Peach again. I'm sorry for doubting you all. Uh, but who would have ever known? Because I'm just not a, I'm not a fresh peach person. So I wanted to tell you that. Thank you for recommending it. Um, I also, uh, we watched the season finale of Survivor, and I would assume by now, by the time you all are watching this video, that you have, uh, watched the season finale of Survivor. It, in my opinion, was my least favorite reunion show ever to date. Because the reunion show, normally they show the whole cast and, you know, they might not talk to every single person, but you at least get a chance to see. I like to see them cleaned up, you know, gussied up with their makeup on or their hair done and their, their nice clothes or whatever. And the guys, if the, maybe if they had a beard, they shaved it. Or maybe if they had a lot of long hair, they cut it short. You know, there are differences. And... I don't feel like I got to see everybody at all. So I was disappointed in the reunion show. Um, I was happy for Ben. I'm gonna be honest, Chrissy was my favorite throughout the entire se uh, series. I liked Chrissy a lot. I did not like how she got at the very end where she wanted to make create the, the a, an additional hidden immunity idol. 
you know, she wanted to take like a an, an idol that couldn't be played with a piece of paper and put it together and try to trick Ben. The way that she went about it, that wouldn't have been bad just talking about it. But then to go through all this talk at tribal council and to just, you know, try to dig it in further, I, I that didn't impress me with her. But I really liked her the entire series. Uh, I think... Uh, I could have definitely seen her as a winner. However, I'm glad that Ben won because I think Ben needed the money. Period. I don't think Chrissy needed the money. Uh, I swear when her husband came out to visit her on the island, I swear he was wearing like a Vineyards Vine shirt. Anybody that's coming out on Survivor to play a game or compete or visit loved ones in a Vineyard Vine shirt, well, you've got more money than me. <laughs> So, I was glad just looking at it, although I do think Ben played a very good game. He he did a good job. He found hidden munios. He he was a good game player. Um, I, I think just looking at it, though, as far as money, I think it was terrific that he won because I think his family can use the money more than Chrissy's, and that may not be a fair thing to say, but that's that's how I feel. That's my opinion. Um, so, anyway, um, that was nice. Uh, I enjoyed two hours of it, but I did not enjoy the reunion show. That just, they just didn't do enough talking. And when they got, when, once Ben won, they made him stand there and watch the recap of his game, like right there, like you've just won. And now, I guess it's to get his reaction, although... You, they've just watched it, you know. They they've watched the the season with their families at home, I guess. And you know, no one can tell who they don't know who won. But you know, he's just watched this. His family's just what I did, I thought that was a waste of time. I thought that they really should have talked to other contestants, even if they weren't that interesting of contestants. They could have come up with some simple question to ask each one of them to make them feel included. Um, so that's that and I wanted to remind everybody of course by the time you see this well it will be gosh is this gonna go live on Christmas let me look at my calendar Merry Christmas if you're watching this Merry Christmas you this is going live on Christmas Day Merry Christmas um, this will have mean that uh, Kevin and I, that the, the kids have gotten the gifts. Kevin's coming in. Is this Kevin? Yeah, Kevin's coming in. Um, this will mean that you are watching this on Christmas. So I hope everyone had a very Merry Christmas. Um, hope you got some good stuff. And uh, even if you didn't get anything, I hope you're just happy that uh, it's Christmas. And I hope everybody's in the holiday spirit. Um, I wanted to remind you, though, that I think normally Doctor Who comes out with a Christmas special on Christmas Day. Um, I think Kevin told me that Victoria was coming out with a Christmas special on Christmas Day. I think those two definitely. Now, in years past, there used to be like a Call the Midwife special. And has Call the Midwife gone off? Are they going to... Is, is that show gone off? Are they going to do anything? Or I don't know. I don't know about Call the Midwife. But I know that he told me. I'm pretty sure he said Victoria and Doctor Who are having specials on Christmas Day. So you all need to watch those. Because that's what I'm going to be doing on Christmas Day. Because we will have already had our celebrations. We will have celebrated last night. and Or, or yesterday afternoon really. Yesterday afternoon. And everybody will have come over and gotten their gifts and stuff like that so for us it should be a relatively quiet day on christmas day so we should get to watch this stuff so i hope you all have a merry christmas i appreciate you watching uh every day i appreciate the dedication i really really do and i'll see you next time